A few weeks ago, on this channel, you saw a video explaining how to make programming language. So, I think it's worth taking a look at the new programming language that is being developed as we speak. It's called Carbon and has a quite of an ambition goal, at least according to the, its developers. It's to replace C++. Initially introduced by Google and now became an open source project driven by the community, Carbon has the goal very similarly to what Rust had. While Rust aimed to take over C, the objective of Carbon would be to dethrone C++. However, this is not certain, especially since Carbon is still under development and far from being complete. Right now, we can define it as an experimental project, meaning that everything I say now in this video might not be valid neither tomorrow or in a, in a year. However, I think it's still a nice opportunity to raise awareness about this new perspective program language. So, Carbon was introduced by Chandler Carruth at the CPP North conference held in Toronto in 2022. A minimum valuable product is expected this year, and the first stable version is anticipated in 2027. So, what does this new program language offer? The primary goal of Carbon is to ensure bidirectional interoperability with C++. This means that C++ code can be used within Carbon and vice versa. This is possible because the developers are leveraging LLVM. If you are not familiar with LLVM, just a quick recap. It's a framework written in C++ for developing program languages. There is a lot more to say about it. However, I think this is enough for this video. Unlike other program languages, for what we know today, Carbon does not use any formal garbage collection. This means that there is no automatic memory management. In fact, Carbon memory management is expected to be the same as in C++, basically manual. This decision was made for two reasons. This is at least what I think. Ensuring the interoperability with C++ and maintaining high performance in compiled programs. So the syntax is an interesting mix of C++, Swift, and Rust, at least from my perspective. For primitive types, we have bool, integers, floats, with names very familiar with those in Rust. For example, 32-bit integers is i32. There is also a primitive types for string type, which is treated as a, sequ a sequence of Unicode characters. The syntax for variables and constants is similar to Swift. Variables are declared within the keyword var, while constants with the, with the keyword let. Then we have composite types, which currently include three types, arrays, tuples, and structs. Focusing on array, um, I don't have much to say yet, because it's unclear to me if they are using C-style arrays or more like C++-style standard vector. Let's wait and see how this aspect will be implemented, um, especially in terms of safety. For example, are they going to introduce the bound checking uh, for the arrays? One interesting topic is classes and everything related to object-oriented programming. For what I understand, Carbon does not have explicit constructor methods, typical from other programming languages, and objects use um, a syntax style like struct to initialize object. Syntactically, the difference between a static method and an instance method is the use of a self-parameter. While this might remind you of Python, Carbon seems to having its unique approach. In Python, the first parameter of a method must be self. But in Carmel, there is a special syntax. You, you simply prepend a square bracket and just put self inside. I'm not sure about this choice, but let's see how it's going to work out in the future. Another interesting aspect is like classes are by default final, meaning that they cannot be extended. To allow inheritance, you must explicitly declare a class as a base class. Similarly, methods do not allow overwriting by default. 
To enable overriding in the derived class, method must be explicitly declared as virtual, which is similar to C++. Another important aspect to highlight is um, an area on which Carbon developers are putting a lot of efforts, which is about generics. In general, generics allow types to be used as parameters, avoiding situations like in C, where you need to have separate functions for integers or, or float, but basically they, they do the same thing. Carbon plans to implement two models for generics, the checked generics and the template-based. Checked generics are similar to those in Java. The compiler creates a single copy of the generic code and at runtime, the compiled code uses a real class in place of generic type. Since, for instance, all classes in Java inherit from objects, a generic type can be replaced with object at runtime. Instead, template generic follows the C++ model where the compiler generates a specialized version of the generic code for each specific type used. As you can see, these are two different approaches to implementing generics, and it looks like uh, that Carbon aims to support both. So let's have a look at what they plan to implement in the future. First of all, they plan to have lifetimes. There's not much to say here. What I believe is like uh, they're gonna follow the Rust approach on lifetimes. Then they also are planning to work on metaprogramming, which is the ability of a program to modify or respect itself. For example, if you're familiar with C, there is no way in C to, inside the program, to see what fields a structure will have a, a, a runtime because the compiled program don't have this such information. Instead, in Python, there is the built-in function that lists all the methods or properties of, of a class. This is just an example of metaprogramming, particular reflection. It remains to be seen what Carbon will implement about metaprogramming. Error handling is still undecided, so let's see what they're going to come up with. Lambda function, so coroutines, and concurrent programming. Clearly, this video is not a comprehensive overview, and uh, I will strongly encourage you to check out the Carbon repository on GitHub. For now, if you want to experiment with it, you can try it on Compiler Explorer. It's still very early stage, but it's fun to play around with. Let me leave you with this question. Do you think that this program language Carbon will manage to dethrone C++? Is there a reason we need to replace C++, or is this just somebody's...? The question, I think, uh, you should ask a different question. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. okay. So let me address that, and then I, I try to yeah. spin this around. Yeah. The question is like they're trying to solve problem that C++ has, or Rust that C++ that and Rust try to solve problem that C has, which is the memory management and the other technical things. The question I think is that um, if it's gonna manage that. And uh, that is where the problem stands, because companies that have invested resources and time to train software engineers in C or C++ will be very reluctant to change. The question is like, do we need, from a computer science perspective, I mean, informatics perspective, I would say yes, but becoming the new standard, a company investing millions again, Yes, of course, people will say it's a uh, bi-direction interoperable. Yeah. Uh, for instance, in the Linux kernel, they are trying to incorporate the Rust code inside the kernel. But it's far to say Linux kernel completely written Rust. It's going to take ages, and uh, it's going to take ages, and uh, we don't even know whether that is the route. Because one thing is to write a couple of, of new drivers in Rust that connects with the Linux kernel. The other thing is to do the whole kernel. Hey everyone, I'm heading to California in March to visit GTC. It's one of the world's top events for AI and accelerated computing. Thousands of developers and innovators and business leaders will be attending. And if you happen to be there, come and say hi to me. I'll be the Brit with the camera and possibly a sheaf of the special computer file paper too. Now, if there's a topic you'd like covered or someone you think we should go and talk to, definitely let us know in the comments. 
and we'll have a chat or try and interview them. And if you can't get to San Jose, but you want to attend virtually, you can do that for free by registering with the link below. You can watch sessions and keynotes live and really be part of all of that action. It's so exciting for me to be going there, but you, more importantly, can win a 4080 Super Graphics card just by attending virtually. You just need to show a screenshot uh, of you being there, but full details of all that and how to enter, how to be in with a chance of winning a 4080 Super Graphics card or GPU, have a look at the video description or check out the comments below. Anyway, I look forward to hearing your suggestions about what subjects we should cover and who I should talk to.